Well, good evening, everybody. And um, as we wind down to close down another Sabbath, I'm in my driveway at home because um, I wouldn't have got anywhere in time. We took the kids out to the park and so we ran out of time. So I thought I'd start you off with a nature shot of my garden. But I also want to um, start with a bit of a, a nature story. Not a good nature story, but a nature story nonetheless. And it, it's in the 1950s in Australia. And it's about a woman called Jean McNamara and, and her tenacity and her, her fight for the, the solution to a problem that Australia was encountering. See, from the 1930s onwards, the rabbit population in Australia had exploded. It was biblical scenes. It was, it was a plague beyond anything they'd ever seen before. And they were eating the country to starvation. And this woman, Jean uh, McNamara, she was a professor, which in the 1950s, there weren't many in her field. But this woman had noticed that there was a certain disease, a certain virus in North America <clears throat> that would get amongst the rodent population and seem to, to decimate them. And she wondered, would this, be, would this work? Um, sorry, she, she started this research in the, in the 1930s. She, she wondered, would this work on the rabbit problem in Australia? Well, the Second World War got in her way. Bureaucracy got in her way. So then by the 1950s, she finally convinced the CSIRO to give it a shot because they had nothing else to lose. So they started trials in the Murray uh, River, Riverina region and it was an unmitigated failure. In fact, they saw slight deaths in the rabbit population and then nothing, nothing at all. They were discouraged, they were disgruntled, um, and they'd just about given up. And then all of a sudden, some CSIRO, CSIRO um, scientists were called to come back to the Northern Riverina area because there were huge rabbit deaths going on. And they couldn't understand why. So they went and they, they, they checked, they did their research, they found mountains and mountains of dying or dead rabbits. And in the, the course of their research, what they realised was there'd been extreme flooding in the Northern Rivers district of New South Wales that time of that year. And it had given a, an increase or a boom to the mosquito population. And myxomatosis is spread by the mosquito population. So once the mosquitoes bred, and got to such numbers that they were then inf infecting, or they would take the blood from an infected animal, infect another animal, and so forth. It just went, um, and, and it, it became devastating to the rabbit population, for good reason. Um, you know, there's a reason why you can't re keep rabbits in Queensland. They're, they're a pest and they're a menace. And what looked like an absolute failure turned out to be a roaring success because of one woman's determination and you could say blind luck. There's an unmitigated seeming failure in the Bible. See, over a course of a weekend, the leader of a small Jewish sect of people had been nailed to a cross and killed by the Romans. Everybody had left him and deserted him in the Garden of Gethsemane, bolted never to be seen, so they thought again. And so they found themselves desperate, wondering what, had it all been worth the effort for the last three and a half years, what would happen next? And so they gathered together and the Lord appears to them. This is their story. And Jesus tells them to go and wait in an upper room, just like he told them. And as the Bible tells us, there was 120 men and women gathered in this upper room, praying and fasting and desperately wondering if all they'd put their faith in was a total failure. It was going to go nowhere and it would stop with them. Much like the team who were trying to see if myxomatosis would have any effect on rabbits in Australia. In Acts chapter 2, it records this. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place and suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were sitting and then what appeared like flames, of, flames or tongues of fire 
appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. And it says that they went out into the streets and they were proclaiming to all who would listen the, the risen Christ, the good news. They were spreading the gospel that man had been redeemed to God. And some thought they were drunk and laughed at them. Others thought that they were just being lunatics until Peter preaches a message of condemnation, conviction, restoration and redemption. And it says that there were over 3,000 added. And as the preceding days, the days, sorry, the following days occurred with the church, more and more and more and more and more people were added to the church as they were convicted that this Jesus had indeed saved them, forgiven them of their sins, had made a way for them in, into the kingdom. And so this virus of Christianity spread like wildfire. And then when it got complacent and, and settled in spots, it was, it was moved again, with, by, by, whether by persecution or by economic strain. What, they were pushed on and on and on until globally, Christians pop up everywhere, spread like a virus. You know, the Romans considered them to be a virus. They tried to exterminate Christianity and it didn't work because of the power of the Holy Spirit and the total belief in Jesus Christ. You know, today, the Sabbath day, has been our, our chance to reconnect with our, with, our, with our past. We are part of that viral story that is still going globally and seems to be waning in some areas, but growing stronger in other areas. I just wonder how we get ourselves kick-started. At the moment, we're starting to become comfortable with the new normal. Oh, well, you know. What are we doing about spreading the gospel? What are we doing about spreading it in the neighborhoods that you and I live in? What are we doing about sharing what we know? I think the best place to start is to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our lives. We may not see the physical flames above our heads like, like fire, but we can certainly know when we're on fire for the Holy Spirit. We certainly know when he's prompting us and leading us and pushing us and, and steering us towards people who need to know about Jesus. Today has been a great opportunity to, to reflect upon that, to sit back and contemplate my relationship with God. You know, through that uh, story of the blind man, Jesus touched his eyes and he was able to see with his physical eyes what was already taking place in his heart. And he falls on his knees and he says, this is my Lord and I will worship him. Today was the perfect day to do that, to be on our knees, to worship our Lord, and to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need to be a virus, but a good one. And we need to go to places where we're asked to go to, whether it be over the road, whether it be, well, not out of the country at the moment, but I don't know where you're called to go to, and some days I don't know where I'm called to go to, but all we have to do is be prepared to go. It's all Jesus asked of us. Are you prepared to go? Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this Sabbath day. We want to thank you for the rain that fell this morning, for the warmth of the day, for the, just the freshness that's in the air. I want to pray and thank you for family and for connections today, for friends who we've either met with in parks or in homes or online through the, through the hour of power Zoom session. However it has happened, Lord, I just pray that we have, we have connected with you, that we have felt your Holy Spirit pouring out to us. And on a personal note, Lord, I just want to pray and thank you that you have um, been able to, that my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and their daughter are out of Hong Kong now, Lord. They're, they're now in, uh, in isolation in Sydney, but Lord, they're, they're safer than they were uh, a day ago. So I just thank you for that, Lord, and I continue to pray for their success now that they're, they're back in Australia. But Lord, uh, we want to leave all of those things, those worries of whether we're in a safe place or an unsafe place, we want to leave those in your hands, Lord. We want to just reach out and seek your, your presence in our lives. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, it's just that little bit darker, a little bit cooler. So I just pray that you have a fantastic evening. And until we see each other on Monday morning, the, you won't get me tomorrow morning. I'm, I'm taking a, a bit of a sabbatical for Sunday. But I will see you all bright and early Monday morning. And we will start another journey together.
So God bless and take care.